I'm not sure how good my Jessica Fletcher impersonation is going to be, but we definitely have, as James described it, a horrendous murder scene, and I'm actually going to hop out so we can try and figure out exactly what went on here. I'm just going to walk carefully because I don't want to step on the tracks of the murder suspect because that would be tragic if we couldn't work out exactly who or what came through here and murdered some poor hapless innocent bird and I'm just trying to work out we can see there's a pile of feathers here and it's clearly from an animal that has come through and plucked away at the feathers of the bird that it's killed black and white like this hmm long feathers I'm going magpie shrike this was I think the feathers or this the murder victim was a magpie shrike so we know the murder victim we probably know the age of the murder victim as well because magpie shrikes don't grow their full length tail feathers until they reach adulthood so this is probably an adult magpie shrike there's that long feather over there so that, that's where I'm getting the guess that it was, in fact, a magpie shrike that was killed. But I don't think that the victim was murdered here. I think this is not the scene where the crime was perpetrated. This is just where the criminal, no, that's the wrong word to use, taking this analogy a little bit too far, where whatever ate this bird came here and ate it over here, out in the open, which is odd. We know one other thing about the identity of our attacker, and that's that it is a creature that plucks rather than breaks the feathers off. And that's because each and every single feather here is plucked clear. So it's not, the bottom of the feathers is not broken, it's been plucked. And that immediately makes me think cat, because they do come and they do pull the feathers away from whichever bird they've happened to catch. There's a lot of downy feathers, there's some of the longer primary feathers as well. So something went to a great deal of effort to actually pluck away the feathers before eating. Now let's see if we can see any tracks. It probably wasn't dragged, it was probably carried rather than dragged, and then eaten here. So what could it be? That's where it happened, I think. You walk carefully here. Look here. There's one feather over there hanging in the buffalo thorn. So what on earth caught a bird in a buffalo thorn? A bird in a buffalo thorn? That takes away my conclusion that it was a cat because it would take a seriously determined cat indeed to climb into a thorny tree like this and try to catch a, a magpie shrike. This is a mystery. There is not a single track on the road. There's hyena tracks, but I don't think hyena. There's no reason that a hyena would... I mean, I've seen hyena eat things. They will gobble down a meal, feathers and all. It's a pity the light is so dull and grey and flat, we might get a better idea. Hmm. So much for my Jessica Fletcher impression, because I don't think I can solve this mystery. Plucked feathers suggests it was a cat that was responsible for it. That neatly plucked. It could have been an owl, I suppose, because this has happened overnight. Probably while that magpie shrike, if it was a magpie shrike, was roosting. Hmm, the mystery deepens. Something died and met a very untimely end and something ate it. There's a possibility of a honey badger, but I've seen them consume feathers before rather than plucking them out. So not a honey badger. The mystery deepens, but the mornings are full of mysteries out here. And it seems as though Brent has found yet another crime scene. <laughs> The only theme tune I can get into my head is Midsummer Murders, for some reason. I've just got that clarinet part going up and down through my brain. However, we have managed to solve our murder. We have the footprint of the suspect, and it is a truly damning evidence indeed.
I've actually been following these tracks towards where that magpie shrike was killed and then back again all the way along the road. And this is the first relatively clear one that I have seen. So let me try and show you in slightly greater depth exactly what it is you're looking at because it's a very difficult track to actually see. So I've jumped out of the vehicle and I'm going to go and show you exactly what it was. At first I thought they were civet tracks until I realized that they weren't properly round. They were not the, exactly the right size and it ties in beautifully with what it is or the, the way in which the evidence has played out where that magpie shrike was brutally eviscerated. So this track is relatively small but it looks almost exactly like a little miniature leopard track. You can see the toes are not quite as round as that of a civet track. And I know many of you are keen trackers. Let me get rid of this piece of grass as well. I know many of you are keen trackers, so it's something that you would like to closely examine and see. It's not often that we get to see this particular animal's track. And the answer to the mystery is that the magpie shrike was murdered by a serval. That would be my guess, just by judging from all of the evidence that we've seen. This is the size of a serval track. It's roughly, give me, let me give you a sense of scale. It's roughly the length of, I would say, half of my index finger. So there you go. This is a tiny, perfect little cat track that I suspect belongs to a serval. It's very difficult in this light to see and it's very difficult in this light to show you, but I do know that serval tracks are not something that we've often shown you before. So that's something for you to all add to your tracking scrapbook with screenshots of the tracks of the different animals. And I know that there is a serval that lives around Twin Dams. I've seen it before and I suspect that that is the one responsible for the murdering of the magpie shrike. And so I think we can safely say case is closed.